Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Watch Out. Since starting my new watchmaking channel, I've discovered very quickly that the production demands of doing watchmaking for YouTube are a lot higher than the kind of YouTubing I was doing on my other channel, Audio Nautica. So I've been on a huge learning curve over the last few months. So I've really been working on getting new equipment to improve my production values. I got my Sony ZV-E10 that I'm filming on. I got my microscope and camera, so I'm able to bring uh, multiple camera angles. And I also upgraded my production software. But what I found is, is that my trusty uh, MacBook Pro just could not cut it. So I was halfway through editing a video, the video that you're looking at now on the screen, and yeah, this MacBook Pro just could not do what I needed it to do. So I had to do something to be able to get the video finished. So I went out and I bought the cheapest Mac that I could get, and that's it that you're looking at on the left. It's a Mac Mini. So to give you an idea of the difference between these two machines, this MacBook Pro, I bought this probably in November 2019. I paid about 2,200 Australian dollars for it. It was the entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro, a nice machine for the time, but it was kind of like that, that infamous, I think it's the 1.4 gig turbo boost. So um, it glide along, but when you demand more of it, it will give you a boost for a short period of time. The problem is, is that when you do that, it runs really, really hot. So it runs out of gas very, very quickly. Um, production, you try to do anything, the fans just start wearing. So if you're actually recording while you're trying to use this Mac, um, you get a big whooshing noise on the audio. And so I got to the point where I found that I couldn't even do uh, voiceovers using this MacBook Pro because the fans would just start whooshing in the middle of trying to do voiceovers. So that didn't work. And then trying to do uh, this edit in DaVinci Resolve of the video that you're looking at now, it, it just, even the most basic kind of things, like even trying to add a title, it would just stutter when trying to do a title. Uh, also, this has got the infamous um, butterfly keyboard. It's just been replaced by Apple um, about three months ago. They replaced the, the top enclosure on this uh, MacBook Pro. So I got desperate, I had to go out, I needed a machine that would meet my needs for being able to edit this video, so I went and got this Mac Mini. It is the cheapest Mac that you can buy. I paid $900 for it. So again, the one on the left, $900. The one on the right, $2,200. Yes, we're looking at three and a half years or so apart but the difference in performance in these machines is just incredible and just shows you how amazing these M1 slash M2 architecture Apple Silicon Macs are that you can run out, spend $900. It was on special, they're normally $9.99, I got it for $8.99, but you can run out, get so much power for $899 Australian dollars is just amazing. So uh, I'm very pleased with this machine. It's not gonna replace the MacBook Pro. So this um, Mac Mini has only got a 256 gig SSD. So I went out and got this uh, NVMe enclosure and I've got a two terabyte um, SSD in there. And then I've got like a four terabyte spinny um, external disk for just for like backups and so on. Um, but I wouldn't be able to use this to replace the MacBook Pro because it just doesn't have enough storage and I think I'd probably ideally would really like 16 gig of memory for a, like a do everything machine. So for a lot of people, yes, the entry level machine is, is not going to be a do everything machine, but the power of it is just incredible. We'll look at the benchmarks in a moment, um, but you know, maybe this might be an option for you to do what I've done is this machine isn't replacing my laptop, but it gives me the power to get my workflow done, and I can now do workflows that I couldn't do. So let's go and have a look at the benchmarks and see the difference. So on my MacBook Pro 1232 single core 4125 multi-core, just a caveat too, this is not meant to be a full benchmarking video. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that have that already. This is intended just to show you how much power I got by buying this cheapest Mac that I could get, my Mac Mini, 
compared to my old MacBook Pro. So here it is, 2639 single core, 9992 multi-core on my $899 Mac Mini. Multi-core performance, all those bits and pieces there. And now he's opened CL 6695 on the MacBook Pro. And on the Mac Mini, 27862. So pretty big difference on the Mac Mini for OpenCL. If we go to Cinebench, we see 4007 multi-core, 998 single core. This is for the MacBook Pro. And on the Mac Mini, 8772 multi-core, 1660 single core. So again, substantially faster. And if we just have a look at those graphically, generally speaking, apart from OpenCL, there's a huge difference. But apart from that, it's pretty much twice the speed. So more or less twice the speed on the base model Mac Mini compared to my late 2019 MacBook Pro. So, but this is the one that really matters to me. This is uh, DaVinci Resolve. And we can see... Um, this is the MacBook Pro, and yeah, it's going pretty slowly. Just hit 1%. Let's have a look and see how the Mac Mini goes. It's up to 12% already. So the Mac Mini is flying ahead. This is the one that really, really matters to me. Remember that the Mac Mini, all the, the M2, has a built-in media engine, so we just jump to the end and see how long it took to do it. Three minutes and 15. Three minutes and 15 the Mac Mini did using that amazing multimedia engine. And, well, yeah, the MacBook Pro, it's only at 14%. It's going to need another 20 minutes. So uh, if we just skip ahead and see how long it took... Um, we can see that it took 27 minutes. I don't know why those media offline red things are coming up, but it did do the export correctly. Um, however, I had the screen capture software running on both machines, and um, so I actually ran it again. This is without the screen capture software running on the MacBook Pro. You can see it was a little bit quicker, 2344 without the screen capture software running. So what this tells us is that with even the most basic uh, graphical kind of tasks running, the MacBook Pro really struggles if you're doing any sort of editing at all, whereas the, the Mac Mini, it just, it just did it like a breeze, even though this is the base model. So, yeah, this shows you just the incredible power that's available in these new M2 chipsets. In this, the cheapest Mac that I could buy for $899. I hope this video has been useful for you. If it was, you might like to give me a like. You might consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye for now.